Hi, and welcome to part two of a trig differentiation video for Calc 1. In the first video, we explored the graph of y equals sine x and why the derivative then would be cosine of x and filled in all of the trig derivatives um, and did a few examples, one using quotient rule. So let's look at this problem right here. Find an equation of a tangent line to the curve f of x equals x plus cosine x at the point 0, 1. So let's first take a look graphically what they're asking us to find. All right, so looking at our graphing calculator and going to y equals, I'm going to type in the function that I was given, x plus cosine of x, and I'm going to specifically pay attention to the point 0, 1. Now, please go ahead and make sure that you are in radian mode. So right there is radian versus degree, I am in radian mode, then I'll go ahead and just graph this in a standard window. Now if I'm only looking at the point zero 01, perhaps you could zoom in a little bit on that area, that is entirely up to you, but I can see zero 01 being approximately right here. So if I look at zero 01, I'm looking for the equation of the tangent line at that point. So I expect my tangent line to look something like so, maybe to have a positive slope, um, and so I can graph that when I'm done and check it. In order to write the equation of any line, I need a slope and I need a point. Now I'm not going to just say m here, I'm going to also say m tangent, because again, we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line and the equation of that tangent line. So I was given the point 0, 1, so again, when we want the slope of a tangent line, we want to find the first derivative of our function. So it would be 1. Derivative of cosine of x would be negative, so I'll change that to a minus sine x. And now, slope of the tangent line is specifically at this point 0, 1, so it's at the point when x equals 0. So if I find f prime of 0, that's going to give me the slope of my tangent line of that function at that point. So I'll substitute in a 0 for x. And we should know sine of 0 is 0. So I have 1 minus 0. And then slope of the tangent line is 1. So my slope of my tangent line is 1. I have the slope and the y-intercept, so I can go straight to slope-intercept form. So now let's check this graphically and make sure that this makes sense. So if I go to y2 and I put in 1x or just x plus 1 as that line and graph that at the point 0, 1 that is in fact looking like it is a tangent line. So there's my equation of my tangent line. All right, let's do another example where we are using quotient rule to differentiate this function. And I'm just going to, because it says use the quotient rule, what this is meaning, and, and I'll show you why on 4b, just use the quotient rule from this f of x that's given. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and simplify as much as we can that derivative. So let's use the quotient rule. So this will be my derivative here is right away in step one, f prime of x equals, so it'll be low, so secant x, d high, so the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, derivative of that minus 1 is 0, minus, watch your parentheses, high, so carry down the entire numerator, d low, and the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. So I have low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Now be very cautious about what you are simplifying here. I'm going to show you a technique different than what I did in the first video. I mentioned it in the first video, but I didn't do it. I see two terms in my numerator, low d high and high d low. So I just highlighted those two terms in blue. And so what I want to do, I can see that they each have a factor of secant of x. Okay, because this secant x tangent x would need to be distributed here. So every single term, if I distribute it out, is going to have a secant of x. So one strategy might be, let me try and factor out a secant of x from both of those blue terms. 
So then that's going to leave me with just secant squared x in the first term minus, I'm going to leave tangent x minus 1, and then just this tangent of x would be left over. So now, because the secant of x in the numerator is factored out, I can go ahead and divide it out. So that's only going to leave one factor of secant x in that denominator. And I'll multiply out my numerator. So I have secant squared x minus, I'm going to distribute the negative along with this tangent x, so minus tangent squared x plus tangent x. And then I've got to think about my Pythagoreans. And hopefully we know cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. And if you know that one, you can derive the other two. Again, you can divide through by cosine squared x, or you can divide through by sine squared x. Since I'm dealing with secants and tangents, I'm going to go ahead and divide through by cosine squared x. So I get a 1 plus sine squared x over cosine squared x is tangent squared x then its reciprocal is secant squared x. Okay, so here's my Pythagorean, and what you should notice is if you look back over here at your first derivative, you have secant squared x minus tangent squared x. Anytime I'm working with that many quadratics, I really am hoping that it's coming from a Pythagorean identity. So I have a positive secant squared x, and then if I subtract tangent squared x over, because if I'm moving it over to um, see what this identity would then be rewritten, it would equal 1. So I'm going to replace all that with a 1. This could be one place of stopping. I'm going to show you a little bit more here. This is actually a complex fraction because tangent is a fraction and so is secant. So or if I write this in terms of sine and cosine from my answer, my first derivative is 1 plus sine over cosine in terms of functions. Of course, you need the angle of x. And then the reciprocal of cosine is secant x. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by cosine x because cosine x over cosine x is 1. So I'm not changing the value. I'm just changing the way it will appear. So if I distribute that cosine of x in, I get cosine of x plus sine of x over 1, which I don't have to write. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these two yellow f primes because they should be equivalent. And again, I could check that by substituting in any numerical value um, and see if those are equivalent. Okay, so let's take a look at the directions though for the next question. Simplify by writing, it's the same function that we had in the previous problem here, f of x equals tangent x minus 1 over secant x, in terms of sine x and cosine x first. So simplify this first and then find your derivative. So let's do rewrite here. And again, I like to label my rewrite so I know I'm not finding the derivative. This should be at any point throughout this process. This part right here should be equivalent to the beginning. So f of x, so I'm just going to put them in terms of sine and cosine like it tells me. So tangent of x is sine x over cosine x minus 1. And it's all over secant x, which is reciprocal of cosine x. And this is kind of what you saw me do at the end of the previous problem. I am going to sort of simplify this complex fraction by multiplying by a factor of 1. So I can see that all of my common denominators are cosine of x. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by cosine x and the denominator by cosine of x because cosine over cosine, this is really what I'm multiplying by, is just 1. So I'm just changing the way this is temporarily going to appear. I should not be changing its value. You potentially are removing a domain restriction. We'll talk about that throughout the course. But for any other x values, you should be fine. So I'll distribute this cosine. Okay. So I have in my numerator just sine of x minus cosine of x. And in my denominator, I have a 1. 
So I certainly don't have to write the over 1. So now don't forget, this is just your original function. You actually haven't found a derivative yet. So that is actually one common error, is that people circle that and move on because they've done a lot of work to get there, forgetting you actually have only done your trig identity part, you haven't actually done your derivative part. So here's where the derivative comes in. I'll now do the calculus because now this part should not take too much effort at all. The derivative of sine x is cosine x, then since the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, that'll change the sign of that term to be positive. So this derivative was in fact the exact same as part 4a was. The benefit to this one is if you put it in terms of sine and cosine, you're keeping this derivative step fairly straightforward and simple versus in the other problem when we did the derivative, right, we had, if we would have multiplied everything out, for example, we would have had secant to the third and we would have had a secant with a tangent squared and it gets a little bit more complicated. So the use of trig identities I think is actually stronger in this case if you don't simplify it first or write it in terms of sine and cosine. Again, you end up in the same place, so your comfortability with trig identities is really going to be what determines that. So that's the beauty of why you learned trig identities is that there's going to be, you know, many ways to represent an equivalent answer for many of these trig derivatives. I hope you find that helpful. Thanks for watching.